Hey everybody, East Coast Steve here. Welcome to Mid Rock Crisis. Today we're talking about Sir Richard Thompson. You know who that is, right? Tree Born in 1949 in West London, a consummate singer, writer, and songsmith. His debut with folk rockers Fairport Convention in 67. His unique guitar technique on both electric and acoustic assured his career, but much of the time was spent distancing himself from folk music, even if he never saw himself as a folk musician. His dad was a detective at Scotland Yard and an amateur musician, a Django Reinhardt enthusiast. Richard was exposed to jazz and early rock growing up in the 50s. He would seek out musicians in and around the nascent London folk scene to form a band. Joe Boyd, a producer, talent scout, wrote, Was this group of very nice Muswell grammar school kids playing American music of Leonard Cohen, Richard Farina, and Bob Dylan, done in a West Coasty rock style? His words, not mine. And then came the guitar solo, and Richard just played the most amazing solo. Django and Charlie Christian were invoked in Thompson's phrases. Soon after that, Boyd arranged for Fairport Convention to sign with Polydor. Thompson saw that cover songs wouldn't go far beyond regional recognition, so he started to write and compose. The fact of the matter is that there is a deep well of excellent material to draw from at the cover band, and what was popular with audiences were usually well-known standards and snazzy American hits. A songwriter, on the other hand, has to experiment to find his or her niche. What is quality? And does quality equal popularity, or is it all showboating? And what about trends? Will they last beyond fads? A singer-songwriter is more than a performer and more than a linguist. And even if everything is in place and in time, there is still no guarantee of success. You also need will and determination and luck. Thompson's first album was Fairport Convention. By the way, back then they were called the Brit. Jefferson Airplane with vocals by two guys and a woman and normal light -like guitar breaks. Time will show the wiser and Joni Mitchell's I Don't Know Where I Stand were the two best songs. If is wicked catchy. Joni's Chelsea Morning is a throwaway. A toss-up. 69. What we did on our holidays. This is the album that announced the arrival of a new musical direction for the band and for music itself. This came about when Richard Thompson met Sandy Denny. Richard's Meet Me on the Ledge was a standout. When Sandy Denny joined Fairport, an angelic voice was added to, and her lyrics were deep and dark and ethereal. Her father and gay, a lovely historical piece, Mr. Lacey is a bit Murphy, No Man's Land, accordion song. Just ask Leo Cocky what he thinks of accordions. I'll keep it with mine, it's a tender Dylan piece and Sandy can do no wrong. Tale in a hard time, pleasant, pastoral, and trippy. She moves through the fair, like live dead, but with great lyrics. Sandy Denny has made Fairport world class. You're going to need me, sounds like Fleetwood Mac would sound in 10 years. And the sleeve art is a bit curious. 1969, unhalf bricking. Extra credit if you know what this word means and write it in the comments. And Wikipedia is no help, trust me. It means something, but it's a make believe word. Number one, Genesis Hall. Sandy is hitting her stride, a gorgeous waltz. Two, if you gotta go, let go. Dylan, D 
didn't cage you. Autopsy. Sandy Denny does scads in three-quarter time. Or a sailor's life. You feel a calm sea. Sandy's voice soars above. Cajun woman. Typical tea bag blues. Number six. Who knows where the time goes? Folk rock was invented right here. Judy Collins and 99 other artists covered this achingly innocent yet masterful song. Seven, Percy's song, mandolin and harmony. Turn, turn, turn again. The songs from Munhaftrican were scratched from Fairport's playlist at the request of the band because of a car accident. The band's van driver fell asleep at the wheel on the way back from a late night gig. The members of the band were injured and two were killed. Sandy Denny rode in a different vehicle, so she was spared except for the profound heartache that she and the band felt at losing two of their own. The band considered quitting, but as so often happens with a tragedy, there was a realization that the victims would have wanted the band to continue. I think the sense of urgency and fragility would carry over into their next album, like they had to give their all right now. And they did. 1970, Leaf and Leash. So what's all this about Sandy Denny? You thought this was about Richard Thompson. Well, that's right. But these early Fairport albums that Richard played on must be considered on any Richard Thompson discography. Because of this album, it is written, Leaf and Leash is the most influential album of all time. One, come all ye, earthy and organic, Fairport at their best. Arouse the spirit of the air and rule the rolling sky. Absolutely. Reynardine, subdued and spooky traditional like something bad's gonna happen, but is it imagined? Three, Maddie Groves, no one sings it like Sandy. Many a man has tried. Four, farewell, farewell, mellow and breezy and self-assured. Richard has become so good his guitar seamlessly blends with the band. Five, the deserter, light and heavy. Three-quarter violins rule this one. Six, medley, bouncy violins, bass and drums. This is folk prog. Number seven, Cam Lynn. Oh, I love this song. It's like a J.R.R. Tolkien side story. Eight, crazy man Michael. Your true love will die by your own right hand. Yikes. Now, with an album of strength climbing the charts, the guys all thought the sky was the limit. But then Sandy left, and she was unreplaceable. Denny's absence was a mixed blessing. Her spellbinding appeal was gone, but this also meant that the rest of the band had to step up to the plate as vocalists. And for Richard, it was now or never. 1970, Full House, Richard's last album with Fairport. He had written lyrics enough for a bunch of albums and he wanted to expand. There were no hard feelings about his exit as he returns often to collaborate and produce with Fairport Convention over the next half century. His first solo record was backed by Fairport's members, and it was known as Henry the Human Fly. He married Linda Peters, a singer in, on, on this album. Is Richard self-conscious? The bug mask? Maybe just to get noticed, but that didn't really work, did it? The music was excellent. Mercy beat driven reels with polka accordion and electric and acoustic guitar runs, but Fairport convention fans felt something was missing. Henry was and is Warner's worst selling album, now considered a classic and a collectible. 73, Richard and Thompson, sorry, 73, Richard and Linda Thompson, I want to see the bright lights tonight. Rolling Stone magazine included this album as one of 500 best of all time. 
put out by Island Records, and it didn't chart or sell, Richard had not yet figured out how to market himself. Linda adds cheer to Richard's wry, dark observations of hopelessness, songs of common thievery, begging, and inebriation, but a very warm sound overall, sad but resigned, disillusioned, positively English. Richard says he puts all the hope in his third verse. So there's that. 74. Hopey pokey. Ten delicious flavors. Richard and Linda toured coffee houses when Fairport's Simon Nicole completed the trio. An organ's bass pedal was hooked up to a practice amp. Using house mics, their audience was so rapt you could hear a pin drop. These three albums preceded Richard and Linda's conversion to Sufism. Richard has merged rustic folk and Carnaby skiffle and Stratocaster rock. Upbeat melodies with austere acerbic prose, but breezier than bright lights. Pub sing-alongs, outstanding harmonies. 1975, pour down like silver. Not much chance of Richard Thompson taking over where Elvis left off to the chagrin of his label. Linda said, Considering all these songs are about God, some of them are not bad. Richard was not happy. His new faith was his attempt to find a niche in life. His spiritual advisor advised giving up the electric guitar. Compromise was reached and songs took on a less worldly outlook. Also, Richard played some dulcimer. Dave Maddox and Dave Pegg of Fairport Convention added bass and drums. 79, First Light and Sunny Vista. Richard admits to being spaced out during the late 70s, not on drugs or booze, which had never been his problem, but on following a strict and uncompromising ethos. He was struggling with coming to terms, and aesthetics and celebrity don't blend, just ask Cat Stevens. Still, this period helped to bring forth the artist and the man Richard would become. How many rock personalities have been laid waste by the music business? If nothing else, Richard Thompson is a survivor. In 80, shoot out the lights, Richard and Linda separated but still toured. The album was well received, ranked 333 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest of All Time. Tangible angst reminiscent of Fleetwood Mac's rumors. Linda's Did She Jump or Was She Pushed? It's used in True Detective Season 1. 81, Strict Tempo, an instrumental. I'm sorry, you just have to listen. In 83, Thompson Solo, Hand of Kindness. Tear-stained letter marks Thompson's coming out of purgatory and rebuilding his career in music. This album seems kind and content and optimistic, except for Devon's side, which doesn't. In 85, he signed with Polydor again and remarried Nancy Covey, who recorded Small Town Romance and Across a Crowded Room. In 86, Daring Adventures, Americanized and Commercialized, Sunset Sound Studios, Wall of Sound, had little appear for Fairweather Friends. Richard dons his emblem beret. In 88, Amnesia, New Capital album, vigorous promotion, lent credence and sales. His half plectrum, half finger picking sounds like two guitarists. He has technique and is comparable to Leo Kotke. In 91, Aussie movie soundtrack, Sweet Talker. Oops, bad move. Richard promised himself never to do another soundtrack. In 1992, Rumor and Sigh. Grammy nomination for Best Alternative Recording. Popular in 1952, Vincent Black Lightning track and I Feel So Good are hit singles. This album is Thompson's new zenith. And he has maintained this level of quality and continues to do so. I'd say Richard figured out the marketing, 
or per perhaps he's just never needed a star on the sidewalk. He looks beyond the end of the road. I got to see him play in Indianapolis at a supper club. I was real close. It's like being next to Bob Dylan doing all his early stuff. It's that good. Yeah, maybe not as well known as some, but people know him and respect him. And I just love the way he plays guitar. I've tried to play that way. It takes a little more than just trying, though. Get yourself some Richard Thompson. Get yourself some Black Lightning motorcycle songs by Richard Thompson. He rocks, he rolls. He sings most beautiful lyrics, and he's a tough guy, a real tough guy. Thanks for being with me. I'll be back as soon as possible. Be well. Here comes the hand. Ah, the hand, the hand.